I would like to tell you about a young man. Let's call him Taylor. Four years ago, he was struggling to find his first full-time job. On-campus recruiting was unsuccessful and discouraging. Submitting his resume to the digital void got him nowhere. Graduation was rapidly approaching, and Taylor was desperate for advice. I introduced Taylor to Lisa, a successful executive who offered to help him. Lisa spoke to Taylor at length, and then she said something that stunned him. Stop trying to land a job. Instead, go out and meet 100 people. She might as well have asked him to climb Mount Everest naked. At about the same time, I was going through a transition too. I had been with the same firm for 30 years, and it was time for a change. And as I set off on my own, I had the same twinge of fear some of us have when making a switch in a job or any switch, a feeling of being lost at sea with no land in sight. I sought advice from others, and the message was the same. Meet as many people as you can. Meeting people. Such a basic idea. It should be as easy as breathing. Yet not many of us think to proactively meet new people unless we have a specific need, and sometimes not even then. Networking has an ick factor, something to be avoided, transactional and uncomfortable. Especially when times are tough, we tend to turn inward rather than reaching out for help. Technology has made it so easy to be digitally connected, we think that we are. By having hundreds of Facebook friends and LinkedIn contacts, we have the illusion of a strong network. Yet unless we meet people face to face, we haven't developed deep personal relationships. Instead, we feel lonely and disconnected. And this is common among the young and the old, and it's getting worse. Our cell phones are our shields. We're so busy texting and emailing, we don't have time to talk to one another. Our devices interrupt, they distract, and they prevent us from developing connections in real life. We hide behind our phones. We pretend to be busy. We don't know what we're missing and we're afraid to find out. And while we think we're effective online, a study published in the Harvard Business Review has shown that an in-person request is 34 times more likely to be granted than one made by email or text. 34 times. It's hard to say no to someone in person. We develop real and valuable relationships in person. All successful people know this, yet it seems like meeting people in person is becoming a lost art. Meet 100 people, Lisa said, and you might ask, why meet 100 people? You can't meet 100 people quickly. Like building muscle, developing a network takes time and effort. A full day of exercise today will not get you in shape. But one hour, three days a week, for three months will. Make networking a habit and you will have access to vast resources. Now, I'm not a social scientist. I'm an investor. My observations draw from over 30 years of interacting with thousands of people, including some of the best networkers out there entrepreneurs, investors, salespeople, journalists, executive recruiters, people whose careers depend upon meeting hundreds of people. Their networking techniques are simple, yet masterful. They know that every person has the potential to be a gold mine of ideas, information, and experiences. They look for people in the nexus of vast and valuable networks of their own. They nurture these contacts, they keep them close, 
And they know that who you know opens doors, gives you advantages, and accelerates your success. Your network is as valuable as your education and expertise. Credentials are great to have at the start of your career, but they are insufficient for long-term career success. Nothing in life stays the same. On average, a young person is expected to hold over a dozen jobs in their lifetime. So even if you have a job today, you're going to be looking for another one in a couple of years. And nearly half of us will be freelancers at some point in our careers underscoring the need for networking and for marketing ourselves regularly. The good news is that building a network of contacts is entirely in your hands. I'll share some proven techniques, but let's get back to Taylor. Daunted by the task of meeting 100 people, Taylor was unsure of where to start. He didn't think he had a network but he found he did, and you have a network too. It's people you already know, your classmates, your professors, your neighbors, members of your community. They are your first degree connections. Start with them because they will introduce you to their connections who could be helpful to you. And it's these second and third degree connections that are shown to yield the most interesting and valuable opportunities because they extend your reach. Securing a meeting with a warm referral is best, but even a cold call to someone with a common contact or interest will do. Taylor was still hesitant even after he figured out who to talk to. He was worried about two things. He was worried about rejection and embarrassment. And he thought, who's going to want to meet me? What am I going to get out of this? And what if I mess up? Still skeptical, he set up meetings one by one. And like climbing a mountain, he made slow and steady progress. And he found that people were happy to give him advice and pay it forward to the next generation. People like to share their stories, their experiences, and the lessons they have learned. Frankly, people like to talk about themselves. He also found that he had something to add to the conversation. Regardless of age, gender, race, ethnicity, life experience, everyone has something of value and can add it to the conversation. I know I learned something from everyone that I meet. So Taylor's first meetings were mixed. Some were very helpful others not as much. It took him several meetings to get into a rhythm, but he did and his confidence grew and he was no longer nervous. He started to enjoy his meetings and he found that if he had a humble attitude, one that was willing to learn, others were willing to help him. Let me give you a quick update on three steps he took, which helped him and frankly will help anyone as they build their network. The first one is prep. And preparation starts with you. Figure out what is of value to you and what it is you want. The more specific you are about what you need and want, the more easily somebody can help you. Then do your homework. Do research on the individual. The organization, the industry, prepare a list of thoughtful questions, anticipate what you might be asked, and practice responses. Be systematic. I was invited to be on a podcast recently, and I asked, what could I do to prepare? And they said, no, nothing at all, just come. I went online. I did research on the host. I listened to several interviews with previous guests, and I learned that the hosts asked each guest the same opening and closing questions. I was totally ready when I was asked those same questions. Step two is connect. The connection or the metaphorical handshake is the key. And it starts with just that. A firm and friendly handshake, a look in someone's eyes, and a smile. 
approach every meeting with a positive and cheerful attitude. Now, when you meet someone new, they're likely to be different from you at first. It is your job to figure out the topic that brings you closer. When I go into someone's office, I look for the clues they have placed there revealing their interests. A book, a memento, a photo. Sometimes the simplest things can create an immediate bond. The idea is to build a relationship that is mutually beneficial. And for that, you must be authentic. Humans are good at detecting sincerity. Show respect. Listen well. Really listen well to find ways that you can be helpful too. And be curious. The more interested you are, the more interesting you are. And step three are next steps. Magic happens when you meet. To keep it alive, you must follow up. This is where many fail, but you won't. It is a simple task to write a brief email showing your appreciation. Do it right away. It's essential to say thank you. If someone gave you money, you would say thank you. Everyone's time is valuable, so you need to show that appreciation. And if you really want to impress, write a note. It's so rare nowadays, you will certainly be remembered. You planted the seed with an in-person meeting. Now it's time to water it. If it was a great meeting, find ways to meet again. Send an article or a suggestion. Find ways to be helpful to continue the conversation. Now you might say, I don't have time to network. If you have time to eat, you have time to meet. Invite the person for breakfast, for coffee, for lunch. Mark your calendar so that not too much time passes and you can follow up and keep a database, a spreadsheet of the people that you met and some memory triggers and follow-up steps. So three important steps, very simple, prep, connect, and next step. Some additional thoughts. The road ahead is a long one. My first job rejection came from a guy called Jim. And Jim said no to me so politely, I always thought highly of him. I was really surprised how many times our paths crossed over the years. He once asked me for career advice. We have invested together and we are friends. So be polite and be nice. You never know when you're going to come across someone further down the road. Don't underestimate serendipity. Zappos designed their office space to allow employee intermingling in what they called intentional collisions. Change up your routine. Bump into someone new. Talk to people in the lunchroom, at the elevator banks, on the soccer field, at this conference. Chance encounters can germinate new ideas and yield unexpected benefits. Lifelong networking allows you to be your own journalist on life. Rather than just read about what's happening, talk to people, find out firsthand what are they doing and seeing? How are they interpreting events? The more people you meet, the more your eyes will be open to what you don't know you don't know. Meeting many people gives you a perspective on what good looks like. You know a good professor or manager because you've had many. Some good, some not so good. The more people you meet, the more benchmarks you have. Recognizing talent is an extremely useful skill for when you assemble teams and seek expertise. The more people you meet, the more interesting you become because the stories they tell can become part of a playlist of interesting stories you can tell. And you too can become a connector and introduce people to one another. Each introduction is a gift you're giving. And the more people you know, the more gifts you can give. Your network is valuable currency. 
it adds to your social capital. The best thing Taylor could have done was to reframe his job search to one of meeting people. It helped reduce the tremendous stress that he was feeling and instead laid the foundation for a network of lifelong value. He increased his confidence and he learned a lot. Networking can yield many opportunities and often yields jobs, and it did for Taylor, a job he would not have gotten had he not met so many people. I find investments and clients by continuously expanding and nurturing my own network. But we each got so much more, and that's why this advice works for all of us at any age or any stage. We found that networking is accessible, joyful, and life-affirming. We looked for and found the treasures each one of us has to offer. So approach networking with the right mindset, one which is authentic, humble, open, curious, and helpful. Meet people in person, connect, and stay in touch. The more people you meet, the luckier you get. Go out and meet 100 people. They are waiting to meet you. <laughs>